Infrared photography is a concept I've collided with a bunch of times during my tenure as a picture taker and maker. And I'm always intrigued by it, but I've never had the chance to try it for myself. And even right from the very beginning, when I was first learning, I was intrigued by the idea. But as people and portraits, photojournalism, weddings, these were the genres I ended up shooting. It never made much sense to get into it. Infrared kind of makes people look weird, which is not necessarily a bad thing, philosophically or anything, but makes them look weird in a way that I never found to be pleasing or artistically compelling. It almost looks like a digital effect. It eats up shadows, it makes people glow in a way that feels like you've just maybe cranked up some slider and some editing software. But as I find myself now photographing other types of subjects, not human beings so much, I figured it was worth revisiting the idea. So recently I've been looking into it, learning, considering my options. This camera that I'm holding is an off-the-shelf stock camera. The brand model don't matter. But I sent it away to have it cracked open, have its guts ripped out, and have it modified into a full-spectrum camera. This is a hardware modification. If you're interested, definitely do your research. Don't rely on stuff that my dumbass tells you. There are decisions to be made, and those decisions come with consequences. You need to know what you're choosing and why. That being said, it's not that complicated. And I'll go over everything I think is relevant here, but seriously, do some independent research. I am no authority. I'm very happy with my choice, but you may not be, and I don't want that responsibility. Once you have your full spectrum camera back, uh, the sensor is now capable of capturing one infrared light or IR, uh, two visible light and three UV ultraviolet light. The stock camera, which begat your full spectrum camera had filters in front of your sensor blocking IR and UV. But those of course have now been removed. Why would camera manufacturers include such filters? Well, fire off one shot with your full spectrum camera and you'll instantly know why. Your colors will look completely fucked up. You'll have an image that is unwhite balanceable. So what's the point? The point is while your sensor is now capable of seeing and recording all of this new color information, you can still be selective about what you're sending through by using filters either in front of or behind your lens. And that's where the magic happens. Some filters clip right into your lens hole. Some filters are permanent and are installed in front of your sensor during conversion. Um, this kind of conversion is not full spectrum, but rather locked to a particular part of the spectrum. And I suppose this is a good option if you like one particular look and never plan to shoot any other look. But personally, I wanted the flexibility of a full spectrum camera so that I can explore a lot of different looks over time. The filter I'm using today is the most subtle and restrained of all the IR filters I found in my research. It's also the filter that requires the least amount of work in post, which is great because you can see roughly what you're getting on the back of your camera, not so with most. The exact specs are not published, but it appears to let pass all the light in the visible part of the spectrum, thus resulting in a normal image. A normal image plus. It blocks UV, presumably, and it allows through IR light 
The things that show as red in these images, which do not appear red in reality, ordinarily, do so because they reflect IR light. Ergo, red trees and shit. It's kind of fun to walk around and discover what will and will not show up as red with this filter on. It's appealing to me because it's not just a cheese ball effect. You're looking at stuff that's really there, but normally hidden from you. Today I'm visiting Santa Fe, Albuquerque's neighbor to the north, specifically because I'm chasing pine trees. Well, evergreen trees. Conifers, right? I think that's right. I don't really know my trees, but I, I did attend a school at some point in my life. Anyway, we don't really have those in Albuquerque, as far as I know. At least not in bulk. It's the tail end of fall, so a lot of the leaves are dead. And dead leaves still just read as brown. I mean, I'm colorblind. What the hell do I know? But as far as I'm able to perceive it, dead leaves read as brown. Dead leaf brown. So let's say I want to have the full spectrum conversion done, but not by a filter right away, maybe down the road. Could I shoot black and white photography with this setup and get normal looking images out of it? And let me give a part B to this question. Um, since I'm capturing a larger part of the spectrum, can I expect better low light performance since the camera is now capable of seeing more light than it was before? Yes, you will get better low light performance with a full spectrum camera and no filter. But it's also kind of useless, in my opinion. Maybe it has applications for astrophotography. I wouldn't know, I've never tried. If you want to photograph people, even in black and white, it's going to look kind of fucked up, like you did something to it in post that you probably shouldn't have. If you're shooting non-living subjects, you might be able to get away with it. And if I use an indie filter, a neutral density filter, in combination with this IR filter you're using, or some other IR filter, will the indie filter block IR light at the same rate as it blocks visible light? The answer is no. As I turn my variable indie filter, the amount of visible light decreases as expected, but the amount of IR light getting through remains the same, resulting in an increasingly red image the more I turn it. I was curious to know if such a thing as an IR ND filter exists. And yes, apparently it does. But a standard one will not work in the way you're expecting, sadly. I suppose I photographed all the evergreens I could stand for a while. So the next day, back in Albuquerque, I went to the place with the highest concentration of plant life that I could think of in the city. I know of this place because it's a wedding venue, but it's also a place that you have to pay to get in and look at plants, and if that doesn't just sum up the New Mexico experience perfectly, I don't know what does. I'm tired of looking at nothing but dirt and sticks and stucco, we will literally pay to look at plants. It's like a strip club for us. Here's an image shot with a normal camera. Here's the same image shot with a full spectrum camera and no filter. Here's that same full spectrum, no filter image in black and white. Now, full spectrum camera using the IR chrome filter. Lens flare looks mostly bad with this setup. It's tinted red. It's kind of exaggerated. I don't know exactly how much of that comes from the camera modification versus the IR filter. I'm guessing both contribute, but it's annoying. I'm going to have to start using a lens hood, and shooting directly into the sun should probably be avoided as much as possible, in my opinion. As long as I'm covering some of the negatives, the sensor cleaning functionality built into your camera will be disabled permanently. And if you're considerably younger than me, you may not know what a pain in the ass it is to deal with dust 
and its magnetic attraction to a camera sensor. Get ready to start seeing spots appear in your images, in the skies, on people's faces. I knew this going into it and chose to go ahead anyway. I mean, somehow I survived this once, so I figured I could do it again, but it's kind of a bummer. So I'm a lot more careful about where I change my lenses. I try not to do it outdoors if I can help it. Consider this next item a potential negative or maybe just a tip, depending on your perspective. And that is choice of camera to sacrifice to the conversion gods. The reality is that unless your DSLR has a very capable live view mode, that is you can use it exclusively via the screen on the back for focusing and composition, forever forsaking the optical viewfinder, it is going to be a poor choice for conversion, mirrorless being a far better choice. You can certainly go out and read a lot more in depth about the issues, but the bullet points are Problem one, autofocus will be an issue. IR will come into focus at a different distance from your sensor as compared to visible light, as will UV. You're going to have focusing issues. Your camera's focus system will have to be recalibrated, but that doesn't really fix the problem. You can either have it calibrated to a specific lens which you plan to use, but now you're stuck using that lens. Or you can have it calibrated kind of generically for average results on various lenses. But a mirrorless camera, or DSLR using live view, will focus directly off the sensor so it won't be a problem. Or at least, it'll be as problem-free as possible without changing the laws of physics. No calibration will ever be necessary. Uh, problem two, can't see shit. The IR filter I'm using to get red plants here wouldn't be an issue because it allows the visible light part of the spectrum to pass through. But many, actually most, possibly all, IR filters you're likely to find or be interested in purchasing block visible light. Ergo, you can't see shit. So have fun composing a shot when you can't see shit. That's an issue when using an optical viewfinder which mirrorless cameras don't have, so it's a complete non-issue on mirrorless. There is a filter also designed to let pass only visible light, blocking IR and UV, and therefore restoring your camera back to normal, but those filters are expensive, at least for a high quality one, and I sort of object on principle to the idea of first paying to have my camera modified, and then paying again to have the ability to return it to normal. That really just kind of seems wrong. If I ever end up buying one, I'm going to be disgusted with myself. The final thing to be aware of is hot spotting. Many lenses are prone to create very ugly and potentially unfixable hot spots in the center of your image. If you like to shoot with your aperture very closed down, this is going to be a much bigger problem for you. Uh, if you generally shoot wide open, less so, but it's something to be aware of. Some lenses are good performers in IR and some are not. That's just something you'll have to try to do research on. In my case, I really just hoped for the best. Hoped my lenses would perform okay. And it seems to have worked out fine. But again, I think that's largely due to the fact that I mostly shoot wide open. Not exclusively, but mostly. Alright then, enjoy the rest of your day.